Okay, so this is all the step by steps. Okay, opening balance equity. That's that's an account that QuickBooks creates in order for it to capture all the beginning balances of any new customers, new vendors, new accounts, or new inventory that we create. Normally, you want to move opening balance equity into retained earnings, okay, because it was set up wrong from the first place. So let me show you what, what I mean by that. Let me go into a balance sheet. Okay, and then there's a running balance here for opening balance equity that probably came from opening balances for bank accounts. Let me go ahead and take a look at that. I look at the reports to see where they came from. So this could be starting balances of inventory. They could be starting balances on credit cards, starting balances on bank accounts. I mean, all these things can create an opening balance equity. Now, the proper thing would be to move that dollar amount into retained earnings. Again, the, some some people could argue that you know opening balance is not really retained earnings. It should be something else. You know, I would definitely leave it up to your judgment as an accountant to do that. But what we recommend doing is taking that dollar amount that's that's sitting on opening balance equity and adjust it against retained earnings. And we hit save and close. That way, when we look at the balance sheet, I just want to kind of go back to my balance sheet. We don't have any running balance in opening balance equity. So just remember, every time I create, I'm going to sh give, show you an example. I'm going to go create a new item. It's a very common case. You have people that create an inventory part. And let's call this mouse. And they put, oh, I have 10 in stock. And they put a cost in here somewhere. So let's say I have 10 in stock. What QuickBooks is going to do is going to create an entry for $200 uh, to be able to create a beginning balance, but it's going to put it in opening balance equity. Same thing happens when I go into create a new account. Let's say I create a new credit card account. I'm going to put here Amex. Okay. And it has a beginning balance. Let's say it has a beginning balance as of the 7th of, let's say, 7800 and I hit save and close, that QuickBooks needs to know what am I gonna do with that 7,800. So what ends up happening is, when I go down here to open imbalance equity and show you, when I go to view register, you're gonna see the $200 fixed asset was entered in there and the $7,800 beginning balance. Pretty much it's a catch-all account that QuickBooks uses to create any new entry with an open imbalance, it puts it in there. So at the end of the day, you may have to think about what exactly is that. You know, is that a liability? Is that something that the owner needs to pay back? You know, is that beginning balance? Is that an adjustment to cost of goods sold? I mean, it may be a lot more than just adjusting it against return earnings. So you also have to be careful on the consequences to that. But for all the opening balances, just adjust them to, um, to return earnings. Okay? So this is basically all the different screens in which you can enter opening balances and they can do the opening balance equity, right? So the slides say, don't do this, don't do that. But the problem is half the times it's our customers who are doing it and we're the ones having to go back and correct it, okay? Okay, accounts receivable errors. What are some, some, some common accounts receivable errors? The most common accounts receivable error is somebody will create an invoice and then instead of receiving the payment, they will bring the deposit straight into income at the register and they're going to overstate or or double their accounts receivable. So let me show you an example of that. So another common error, somebody will go in there and create an invoice for a customer using an item and let's say invoices for 762, okay? So save the invoice. And then later on, they're working in the bank register. So for example, they're in uh, online banking or something like that. And then they see uh, a deposit coming in. Let's say for example, this is it, 815, 17. They'll see a deposit coming in and they'll click on add. Oh, this is for last period. Let me do a current period. Let me do something that's current because we I closed the books and I forgot what password I use. 
Okay, so let's say for example, let me let's look for something close right here, 750. So let's say they see that in there, and then they add it, and they're gonna and they end up putting it somewhere in income. So what ends up happening is, and I'll show you real quick. They put a deposit straight into income, right? Hitting some sort of income account or hitting your sales account, whatever. So they go in the register and they put the deposit straight into income and they completely ignored the fact that that deposit should have had a customer payment. So the correct thing uh, to do to fix this is we're going to go into receive payment. We're going to select the customer that we're receiving the payment for. Let's say we're going to select the invoice. There it is, 762. Let's say that what they actually paid was 750, and I can actually just change the amount that they're paying me here. They're underpaid 12 dollars, whatever. Let's say they're gonna pay that later, 750. Okay, here on the payment, I am not gonna go straight into the bank account. I'm gonna leave it in undeposited funds. I'm gonna click on save and close, and then I have to go back to that deposit that I messed up or that the client messed up, which is um, not that one. It's Let's look at here, the deposit. We go back into the deposit the client messed up, which they used an income account directly. We're going to delete that by clicking on the little trash can and then go up and picking from my list of payments, select my payment here. And, and basically what we're doing is we're leaving the deposit as is with the same dollar amount, but we're replacing the contents instead of it being affecting an account directly we're picking the payment that should have been affected through that deposit. Okay, so that's the way we troubleshoot or we fix uh, those particular issues. Now, in the case of being charged a merchant fee or something like that, let's say for example that you're receiving a credit card payment and the amount that actually was deposited was 700 and you wanna put a bank fee or a merchant fee, you would basically use this line to minus the deposit. So let's say 750 is the original invoice amount, but the bank took $50 fee because they processed through a credit card and the actual deposit is 700, for example. Then you would come in here and you put, you would put a negative number in the deposit side with an expense account like merchant fee or transaction fee or bank service charge and then net it against the gross amount so it matches your bank. Okay? So that is how we fix typical account receivable errors, okay? And most of the times it's because uh, people don't understand bank feeds or downloading, and then all those deposits go straight into an income account, okay? Doubles your income account, keeps your accounts receivable or overstated. It is a mess, okay? So what are the three types of <clears throat> accounts receivable errors? You can have overstated income, overstated undeposited funds, that's because the client received the payment on the invoice, but did not match the payment with the bank deposit. And when the bank deposit came in, they went straight to income. Now, what about negative accounts receivable? That's when the client receives payments against invoices. And then when the deposit comes in, they put a, the category, they put accounts receivable again. So it looks like a double payment. Or they receive a, a payment against an invoice. Sorry, they receive a payment, but they never created an invoice. Okay, so that could also cause negative. The other part is you can have overstated income and overstated accounts receivable. Basically, you create the invoice, record the deposit as income, but never mark the invoice paid. So you will have overstated income if you don't follow the workflow. Receive payment, create invoice, receive payment, make deposit. If you do two of them, create invoice, receive payment, your accounts receivable will be okay, but your income will be double. Okay, because you will have income on the invoice, income on the deposit. If you skip receiving the payment and you just cre create the invoice and create the deposit, then your income will still be doubled because you're going to have income from the invoice income for the deposit. Again, long story short, the most important piece is make sure you follow the three-step process. Create invoice, receive payment, 
make deposit. Okay, so what are some of the ways that we recommend you troubleshoot accounts receivable? The first thing to do is go to the customer center and look for clients that have zero balances with open invoices. That way we can try to apply some of those payments to the invoices. Look for balances that are negative or that they look incorrect, that they look higher or less than normal and kind of audit those. And then make sure that if you have a sub customer or a job, they call it in the desktop world, that you hit the little checkbox that says bill with parent. That way you can have a customer pay multiple jobs or multiple sub customers. And those payments can in fact be applied to those sub customers. Other thing you can do is you can go to the register and look for the pauses that haven't been reconciled or that they are they look like duplicates that probably is causing a double of your income. Also take a look at deposits that, that went straight into income. So just go through your profit and loss account, click on income and then see if there's any deposits hitting that income account. The only accounts that should be affecting um, income should be invoices, should not be uh, deposits. Okay. Also in the customer center, you may have, a customer with zero balance, but you will have an invoice that's open and a payment that's open. All you have to do is click on the payment and click on the checkbox for the invoice and apply it. <laughs> okay. All right. So this, those are basically the sections. Uh, this is everything that we described. All right. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up.